Hi, everyone. So today we're going to talk about our main chakras. A lot of you probably already know this information, but I feel like maybe there's some people out there that would appreciate to hear this today. So the word chakra comes from Eastern disciplines, and we can also refer to them as our energy centers. They exist within our physical body, as well as our personal energy field, which is our aura, and they reflect physical aspects of us, organs, glands, um, nervous system, as well as our consciousness, our emotions, our thoughts, our words, our belief systems. And while some people can sense and feel the chakra on themselves and other people, they may not be as tangible as this glass, for instance, but they are very real. And they have many functions, as I've already mentioned, that contribute to our well-being. So they bring in our universal life force energy, nourishing us, and expelling our own energy that we're ready to release too. So today we're going to talk about the seven main chakras. They run through the core of the body from the crown of the head to the tailbone. I'm going to start with the crown. This is located here, right at the crown of our head. It's our connection to the spiritual realm. It's where we receive a lot of communication from our guides, from the universe. It doesn't mean the only place you receive commun uh, connect sorry, communication, but it's kind of like the first, the gateway to that realm. Then we have our third eye located here between the uh, eyebrows and the forehead. And that is your psychic sight. That's your intuition. That's where your mind's eye is. So when people say, close your eyes, see what you see with your mind's eye, that's your psychic eyesight. Uh, and that's what you would see there. Then we have our throat, which of course is our communication, our self-expression. Our heart at the heart is love, our love, compassion, our understanding and forgiveness for ourselves and for others. Our solar plexus here at the stomach is where we hold our confidence and self-worth, our willpower. It's also where we can hold anger and resentment. We can, that's, those kind of emotions would be an example of blocking a chakra, of getting stuck there. Now, the sacral is just down at the lower abdomen, right? Uh, much but like a few inches below the, the belly button this is where we hold our emotions our sexuality our creativity and then the root of course is where our tailbone is and that's our basic needs for survival shelter food clothing safety i mean you can do a whole course on chakras but that's just a brief explanation for today and i just want to bring it to the forefront or bring it to everyone's attention that it's important because these chakras are connected to us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, that it's important to keep, to balance and, and do regular balancing and clearing of your chakras, whether through a practitioner or yourself or through a meditation. Um, there's, there's, there's many different ways, but it's just being conscious of your energy. And uh, because if one chakra gets blocked, it affects the others. And then that blocks the energy flow in the body, which can manifest sometimes in a physical way, in a physical illness, illness, or a mental situation, or an emotional breakdown, or even just a sad emotional feeling. So you want to have that energy flowing and releasing. Uh, and that's the benefit of a clearing and a balancing uh, with your chakras. And when I say regularly, I mean, it depends. Everyone is so different. Some people have more stress in their lives than others. So I'd say at minimum once a month, um, you know, some could use it every day. Uh, it depends, you know, you have to see how you feel as well. And of course, if you're on a medical treatment or medical protocol, a chakra balancing and clearing can help that. It can help either soften symptoms or just kind of, I always see it as like it's wrapping you in this balm, an energetic balm, which is helping the healing, facilitating the healing. It doesn't replace it, but in, you know, we are a holistic being. So an energetic healing helps any physical uh, treatment as well. And, you know, sometimes it's not always physical that you feel it or emo mental or emotional. Sometimes a situation happens in your life and that's like a wake up call or, uh, from the universe. I had that last week. I wasn't grounded at all. My root chakra, if you imagine there should be roots going into the earth. They were roots that were floating in the air. I knew I was all in my head. I had a lot of things I was doing. I was rushing. I was thinking about a hundred things I had to do in the next three months, for instance. And I was just not in the moment. And I was backing my car into a parking space and talking to someone at the same time. And then I heard a crunch and that grounded me right away because I realized, oh my God, that was my car. So 
yeah. And, and because I wasn't focused, I wasn't mindful in the moment. And yeah, it's an expensive lesson, but you know, I take it as a lesson learned from my guides, my universe, whoever you want to say, it was, it was definitely like, okay, I should have took a breath, stopped a moment, you know, and then focused on what I had to do in the clear and balanced way. Anyway, lesson learned, you know, these things happen. So, but that's an example of when one chakra is completely out of, uh, out of whack it, and that it manifested in a physical way and, you know, in a, in my physical reality. So I uh, hope that was helpful to everybody. And I'm going to do some further videos on the minor chakras. You know, we have like in our hand, palms of our hands, our ears, and then the higher vibrational ones, which are more in our auras. So for now, have a lovely weekend, everyone. And until next time, bye for now.